Hey guys, welcome back to The Hats Project. I'm John Oralaza, and I got a new movie review for you guys. Tom and Jerry, the new live-action 2D, 3D hybrid. It's like Space Jam, but in modern day. So, it's, it's an interesting one, so let's talk about it. As I said in my trailer reaction for the film, I grew up watching Tom and Jerry. Now, I'm not as old as Tom and Jerry. I grew up in the 2000s, and I watched it on, what, Late Night Boomerang, Cartoon Network, whatever it was. I... Loved it. It was just simple to me. I, I love that <laughs> simplicity behind the humor and it's just very juvenile to see Tom and Jerry, a cat and a mouse, use hammers and mallets and just chase each other, bite each other's tails, beat each other senselessly. It, it was just mindless humor. For a little kid, who's not going to enjoy Tom and Jerry? So when I saw the trailer for this movie, I thought, hey, it's a little throwback. That's nice. But how are they going to pull off a whole feature length film? And this is, what, an hour and 41 minutes. I don't think they pulled it off at all. Now this film does something similar to a lot of other films like this, like Transformers, or The Smurfs, or Yogi Bear, for example. A lot of these cartoonish-like characters that they want to make a movie out of, but they feel like, oh, you can't connect to a talking bear. You can't connect to a uh, talking little blue people. You can't uh, connect to freaking giant transformer robots so we have to interject a bunch of meaningless pointless human characters that you can relate to when in reality they're so bland they're so basic i end up at the end of the day relating to tom and jerry i end up relating to the freaking transformers and yogi bear and the smurfs because never in any of these movies do i recall ever relating to any of these humans ever tom and jerry do take a little bit of a step back because yeah, this movie just wants to introduce to you a bunch of pointless characters. Oh, here's the bartender that wants to flirt with Chloe Grace Moretz. Oh, and Chloe Grace Moretz is in this movie, and she wants to have this job so that she can prove to all her friends on social media that she's just as good as them because she's jealous of them because they got all these jobs and making all this money. <sighs> I don't care. You have Michael Pena in this movie who is one of the funniest actors in my opinion working today, but in this movie, he's he's just spewing a bunch of nonsense, a crappy script, crappy lines. He's not funny. He's not as funny as he could be and as he should be. And I don't know. The the style of humor that they wanted to go for him with this movie, it was just not good. Like they went more awkward than what everyone is kind of comfortable with like I, I i know michael pena can do a little bit of awkward humor it's just at that point i'm targeting the writers man because you didn't do a good job you didn't write well for michael pena i don't think you did and chloe grace moretz i think she could pull it off i mean she was she did really good in neighbors too in my opinion but it was just not good in this movie go away son i will say when they finally decided to bring Tom and Jerry on the screen and had them go at it using their crazy shenanigans, beating the hell out of each other every chance they got. It brought me back as a kid reminiscing about the times that I was laughing. It just brought a smile to my face in this movie. The animation in this film was really good. I really liked the blend between uh, 3D renders of Tom and Jerry in the real world. There's this whole big subplot which technically is like the main plot of, of the movie, if you will. Like, there's the, the, this couple getting married, one of, the, one of them's played by Colin Jost from Saturday Night Live. Look, I respect the hell out of that dude. He is in charge of like the weekend update, he also uh, writes for a lot for the show. I do enjoy his comedy on that show, however, here, just like Michael Pena, just like Chloe Grace Moretz, they're dumbed down by this stupid script that is just, ass like it's it's not good it's it's really not good it, the only shining moments of this movie are tom and jerry when when they're on screen because they deviate from them so much to give so much time to all these characters that nobody nobody gives a shit about it's mind-boggling how they messed it up so yeah I don't want to watch it again. I'd rather go watch the cartoon. Nice 20 minute doses of Tom and Jerry beating the piss out of each other. That's what I need. I don't I don't want to watch this again, honestly. And there was a whole freaking bird that kept popping in and out of the movie trying to narrate to you uh, what's happening in the movie, thinking that the, the people who are watching this are dumb. I, I'm an adult, so I feel insulted seeing this bird pop up and telling me what I just saw, but 
I think I think it's insulting a bunch of kids too. And the kids are not that stupid that they would forget what they just saw. Uh man, whatever. All right, I'm done. Let me know down below, what did you think of this Tom and Jerry movie? Have you seen it? Are you a fan of the Tom and Jerry original cartoon? I'd recommend you just go watch that cartoon because this just this would just annoy you. I'd much rather go watch some of the old Tom and Jerry stuff than this. Like, this looks cool when they're on screen. I don't care about the other characters, the human characters. They could, they could piss off. You'll thank me later, guys. Just go watch the original cartoon, but leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and be sure to stick around because I'm doing reviews for Zack Snyder's directed films in the lead up for his director's cut of Justice League. It's gonna hit HBO Max on March 18th. And we got one episode left of WandaVision. It's, it's gonna get crazy, guys. So you might wanna stick around because there's always more to come.